Hi everyone, welcome back to the channel this week. I know a lot of the airline flights have been cancelled due to increasing Omicron cases and I hope that you are not being affected by those cancellations. And for those of you who are able to celebrate Christmas, I hope you had a wonderful and fantastic time with your family. I'm happy that you have taken the time to watch my video during this holiday season. So let's get through this video very quickly and precisely. Let's get started. Right now, almost everyone is looking at how the Omicron wave plays out in the UK. And the UK just reported another record of 122,186 COVID-19 cases on Friday. Now, it is possible that many are infected but not tested. The UK Office for National Statistics, ONS, estimated that 1 in 25 in England could be infected with the Omicron by the time you are watching this video. But with all the new Omicron cases, what do new cases mean now? Here we are looking at two data graphs from our world in data. Now when we set the new cases and hospitalization numbers side by side, we see the UK hospitalization rate has continued to stay steady since the first Omicron case reported in the UK on November 27. Now, there is an apparent disconnection between infection cases and hospitalization. Now, certainly there is a delay in hospitalization rate. And here we are looking at the last five days. There is a slight upward trend in the hospitalization. So what could be the possible reason for the disconnection between cases and deaths? There could be a couple reasons. And first possible reason is that Omicron may be less severe. Now, certainly that is all we hope for at this point. Now, in visual data has suggested that the Omicron has different viral behavior than the Delta variant. And clinically, Omicron symptoms are also more resemble cold. The second possible reason is that the overall population has built up a good level of T-cell immunity against Omicron. Now, the immunity can be from vaccination, previous infection, or a combination of both. Now, this is why a lot of the cases are no longer progressing into hospitalization at this point. Now, in the past, COVID cases are associated with a certain percentage of death. Has that changed? What about COVID deaths? So again, here we are looking at number of cases and number of hospitalization from data pool from our world in data. And this is during the period of the Delta variant wave in the UK. And most people believe that is between May 15th to about September 14th. And during this period, you can see a clear both upward trend in cases and hospitalization. And during this period, we also see the same upward trend in cases and upward trend in the number of deaths. But after the delta wave between September 15th to the third week of December, which is the start of the Omicron wave, we can see a disconnection between cases and hospitalization. And we can see that hospitalizations are staying relatively flat during this period, despite there is a very sharp increase in the last couple of weeks in the UK. And again, when we compare cases and death, we see the death actually are trending down a little bit. So there is a clear disconnection between cases and death based on these raw numbers. And just to confirm, these raw numbers are not so misleading. There is a paper or a article published in Stat News, and they actually plotted a positive association line of daily new cases versus daily deaths. And during this delta wave period from May 15 to September 14, there is a clear positive association. And when they plot the same graph during September 15 to December 17, they can no longer draw the positive association between daily new cases and daily deaths. So you may be wondering, am I suggesting Omicron is not a big deal? Well, not quite. And let's look at two papers and why is that the case. The first study we're looking at is a preprint from the University of Edinburgh. Now they use viral PCR SG negative reports 
obtained in Scotland from November 23rd to December 19th to identify probable Omicron cases, and they find out that these probable Omicron cases is associated with a two-third reduction in the risk of COVID-19 hospitalization when compared to Delta, which is a good news. But again. Once a person is hospitalized, it does not mean the outcome is less severe, and we'll see why in the next study. This study again is a preprint from South Africa. They use a very similar method, which is a PCR report differences to tell a probable Omicron case from other COVID variants. And from October first through December six. Twenty-nine thousand seven hundred and twenty-one of the thirty-eight thousand two hundred and eighty-two cases, or about seventy-eight percent of all cases, were Omicron probable. Now they reported that even though Omicron probable cases had a reduced risk of hospitalization when compared to the Delta case, once the patient is hospitalized with Omicron. The hospitalized Omicron cases and hospitalized Delta cases had a similar risk for developing into severe disease. So, no matter if you had Omicron or you had Delta, once you are hospitalized, you have a fair chance to, to develop into a severe disease condition. In case you are thinking about getting the booster dose to help you reduce the chance of getting. Omicron infection, and here are some of the latest findings that may help you make the choice. Now, I want to emphasize: I'm not trying to promote any particular brands of vaccine. I'm only here presenting the scientific data. One of the most important findings published in the most recent UK Health Security Agency Technical Briefing Document 33 is the estimated comparison of booster efficacy against the Omicron over time. And here I have the efficacy estimation summarized in a table form for your viewing pleasure. Again, you may double check my numbers with the link in the description box. And here we are looking at people with the primary series of either AstraZeneca or the Pfizer BNT receiving either Pfizer or the Moderna as the booster dose. And based on the estimated efficacy data, we see Moderna as a booster appears to work the best. Now I have to point out the number of people received the Moderna as booster is a little bit less than. Those that received Pfizer, so the number may vary a little bit, but nevertheless, the trend does appear having Moderna as the booster does have a little longer-lasting effect. So, what I want to say is that this estimation is actually very similar to a previous NIH study, which showed. Adding Moderna booster to the Johnson and Johnson or Janssen vaccine yielded the highest level of antibodies, and so the loudest voice does not mean they are the best. That is all for this week. My guess is that COVID-related videos are probably the least favorite videos during the holiday season, and I'm so grateful and thankful that you are still watching my videos and sticking with it until the end. I think this is my last video in 2021, and I really appreciate all of the support you have given me this year. Now, in fact, during this time last year, I had only about 288 subscribers. I just checked the stats, and that means more than 99% of you have found my channel this year. And I'm so honored that you have chosen to listen to my talks. And my goal for next year is that I hope I can bring more diverse health-related topic to all of you, and I hope to see you again in 2022. And like always, please stay safe, stay healthy, and take care. Bye.